share is going on holiday was a phone call at the commencement of the trial. I share did not go on holiday. Turkey realized what she'd been planning for years. The invasion brought destruction with it. Cyprus was brutally split in two. The Greek Cypriots fled to seek shelter in more secure areas and have not been allowed to return to their homes ever since. A few days later, the government of the Republic of Cyprus was forced to transfer the Turkish Cypriots to the occupied areas. Turkey was implementing its partitionist plans in the most brutal way. invasion, some 120,000 Turkish Cypriots lived interspersed with 500,000 Greek Cypriots all over the island. Turkey's prime concern immediately after the invasion was to bring in settlers with the aim of altering the demographic character of the island, and this was achieved through a policy of ethnic cleansing. Today, more than 160,000 settlers from Turkey are living in the occupied areas. If 43,000 Turkish troops are added to this number, it becomes obvious that the approximately 87,000 Turkish Cypriots living in the occupied areas are only a minority. Interminable talks, plans, initiatives, all without result. A solution has not been achieved. On the contrary, Turkey, through her intransigent stance, is attempting to establish the status quo brought about by the invasion by seeking the permanent division of the island. Cyprus was unilaterally and illegally declared. With the exception of Turkey herself, no country has since recognized this entity. On the contrary, the United Nations have repeatedly and through a number of resolutions condemned the declaration. The declaration has also been deemed illegal by all European Union bodies and the international community as a whole. A huge flag symbol of the illegal statelet in the occupied part of Cyprus is carved out on the slopes of the once verdant Pentavakilos mountain range. It's lit up every night in provocation to the legitimate residents of the northern part of Cyprus, reminding them that Turkey, after so many years, continues to trample upon their land and their rights. One evening a few months ago, the flag suddenly went out. In fact, not just the flag, but all the lights in the occupied areas were extinguished. There was a serious problem with the power plants in the occupied areas, where the possibility arose of a very protracted blackout. The Cyprus government dealt with the situation in a humanitarian manner, overlooking the illegal status of the occupation regime. It supplied electricity to the occupied areas, and a general blackout was avoided. If Cyprus's economy were unified, the Turkish Cypriot community would definitely not be facing the economic problems it's facing today and which its leadership ascribes to what it calls its international isolation. The true reasons behind the downgraded economy of the occupied areas should be sought from the occupation regime itself and Turkey's own policy. The fact is recognized even by the Turkish Cypriots themselves. Isolated is not the uh, Turkish Cypriot community in the north, but the state, the so-called state, that, which is under the patronage of Turkey. Ahmed Javid, a writer-researcher, has studied the history of Cyprus and has recorded his knowledge and positions in the 16 books he has published. His opinions are expressed lucidly and clearly, despite the fact that, as he says, this bothers the occupation forces. Turkey invaded Cyprus, and since then, our island, 37% of the island, is under Turkish occupation. Uh, a lot of settlers from mainland Turkey were transported or settled in the northern part, 
and now the Turkish Cypriots form a minority in the northern parts of Cyprus. The occupation, the inadequate economic system based almost entirely on the intervention of the so-called state and its dependence on Turkey, and of course the political instability as regards a solution to the Cyprus issue are the real reasons for the alleged isolation. opened the roadblocks and the movement of Greek and Turkish Cypriots to and from the occupied areas was allowed, albeit with metal restrictions. The first visits involved a huge number of people and were due to the Greek Cypriots' need to see their land and homes after almost 30 years. Turkey and the occupation regime are striving to exploit in every possible way the results of the April 2004 referendum on the pretext of seeking to lift the alleged Turkish Cypriot isolation. The Greek Cypriots rejected the Aman plan, not because they do not want a solution of the Cyprus issue, but because they judged that the specific plan did not ensure the reunification of the island. <laughs> Cyprus became a full member of the European Union on May 1st, 2004. Citizens of the Republic of Cyprus can now travel, work and reside freely in all other countries of Europe. The Turkish Cypriots promptly made use of these benefits. The Republic of Cyprus recognizes Turkish Cypriots as citizens and for this reason grants them both passports and all other official documents. More than 90% of the Turkish Cypriots have to date obtained passports and identity cards of the Republic of Cyprus. This enables them to move freely, work and, should they so wish, set up residence anywhere within European Union territory. It further enables them to enjoy all benefits extended to EU citizens, to pursue university studies both in Cyprus and in other European countries, and to enjoy diplomatic protection in other countries. Thousands of Turkish Cypriots have chosen to work in the free areas of the Republic, where the conditions, wages, and pensions are better. system and in all social programs and services offered by the state. Within just the first two years since the opening of the roadblocks, the Republic of Cyprus has extended to Turkish Cypriots allowances and benefits exceeding 32 million euros. Even the Turkish Cypriots themselves concede that their alleged isolation is a result of the invasion and the continuing occupation. Turkish Cypriot journalist Şener Levent Dared called things by their proper name. In his newspaper Avropa, published in the occupied areas, he would editorialize on a daily basis denouncing Turkey's policy on the Cyprus issue. <laughs> Her 
Her ay ödeyebilecekler, taciz yapabilecekler. Burada ne varsa tercihi alıp götürdüler. Ve gazetenin Avrupa'nın satış gelirine de koydular. Biz de Avrupa'yı kapatmak zorunda kaldık. Bulduğu bu yeni isimler Afrika oldu. Yani Avrupa'dan biz Afrika'ya geçtik. Avrupa'ya Afrika üzerinde gidiyoruz. Burası hala Afrika, Avrupa değil. in the occupied areas a raging construction industry through the usurpation of Greek Cypriot properties. Luxury villas, tourist complexes and hotel units are being built in parts of Kyrenia, Famagusta, the Karpas Peninsula and throughout all the occupied areas of the Republic. Many of the villas are being sold to European citizens, mainly British citizens. Söyledim işte yani bütün bu faktörlere bağlı olarak ekonomi ileriye doğru kaydı. Ee, burada bilinçli herkes bunun suni bir ilerleme e, olduğunu, suni bir refah düzeyi olduğunu biliyor. Çünkü biz ürettiklerimizle kalkınmıyoruz. Hazır bulduklarımızla bu refah düzeyimizi burada geliştiriyoruz. Yani işte en önemli faktör de az önce söylediğim gibi İnşaat sektöründe buradan meydana gelen patlamalar, yani yağmacılıktan, hırsızlıktan para kazanıyoruz. Tourism has also seen an increase. Above and beyond the tourists arriving in the pseudo state via illegally operating airports and ports, thousands of other tourists who come to Cyprus for their holidays choose to visit and spend one or more days in the occupied part of the island. Apart then of the foreign exchange brought by these tourists sent up in the coffers of the illegal regime. It's estimated that over the past three years, a share enjoyed by the occupied areas from precisely this tourist movement amounts to 46 million euros. <laughs> Practically all Turkish Cypriots avail themselves of services offered by state hospitals. It's also impressive that a large number of Turkish Cypriots choose to be treated in private hospitals operating in the free areas. They prefer to go to Zara because they don't believe in the medical services here. Either they go to Turkey, to England, or to South. They also visit private clinics in the South uh, so that they can get satisfactory the European Union, as well as the international community as a whole, recognizes the Cyprus government as the only legitimate government representing the Republic of Cyprus, and for this reason the EU has no relations with the illegal regime set up in the occupied areas. It has, however, contributed to the welfare and well-being of the Turkish Cypriots themselves. A shining example is the master plan that Cyprus has divided into benefits for both nations. regime holding sway in the occupied part of the island is illegal. Furthermore, the presence of a large number of settlers also creates problems in economic development, while responsible for this is also the weakness of the Turkish lira being used as tempter. Even a cursory look suffices to ascertain that the economy of the occupied areas is anything but closed. On the contrary, it exhibits the characteristics of an open economy as, for example, its large volume of foreign trade. Imports are obviously much more than exports, and as such, 
problems related to competitiveness are not, as claimed by the Turkish Cypriot leadership, due to the alleged isolation, but due to the large public deficit. Up to 1994 inclusive, 55% of the occupied area's exports ended up in European countries, with the main market being the United Kingdom. The European Court's decision rendering acceptable accompanying documents issued only by Republic of Cyprus authorities changed all that. Exports to Europe fell to 12% and exports to Turkey increased. The main products exported from the occupied areas are citrus fruit, clothing, dairy products and cat foods. From April 2003 and following the establishment of partial free movement, the entry of goods from the occupied areas is allowed without any customs formalities. The goods should be accompanied by a certificate issued by the Turkish Cypriot Chamber of Commerce and are, of course, subject to the necessary safety and health checks required by the European Union. Consumer spending by tourists, but mainly by Greek Cypriots following the opening of the roadblocks, is another significant factor in the improvement of the pseudo-state's economy. Hundreds of Greek Cypriots visit the occupied areas daily in order to purchase consumer goods and leave behind significant sums of money. During these last three years, several million pounds have been spent by Greek Cypriots in the occupied areas' casinos. All these factors have contributed to the increase of Turkish Cypriot income, whereas in 2002 the per capita income barely reached €3,693, Euros, in 2005, it had risen to 7,960 euros. The government of the Republic of Cyprus is convinced that through its proposal for the opening of more crossing points to and from the occupied areas, a greater impetus will be given to rapprochement between the two communities, thus improving prospects for the reunification of the country. The Turkish Cypriot leadership maintains that direct trade would help in lifting the alleged isolation of the Turkish Cypriots. The Cyprus government has no access to the occupied ports and airports, and as such cannot exercise any control over them or impose conditions provided for by international trade regulations. It cannot control the implementation of provisions required by international agreements concerning flight safety and the very operation of airports. As a result, it opposes their operation. In addition, the illegally operating airports are not even recognized by the International Air Traffic Association, IATA, nor are they included in the list of international airports. The same, of course, goes for the occupied areas of two illegally operating ports. The alleged then isolation is exclusively due to the policy adhered to by Turkey. The dependence on Turkey of the inadequate economic system enforcing the occupied areas and the results of the invasion and occupation of the island. Cyprus is not an isolated country. It's a part of Europe and its lawful residents, Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, Armenians, Latins and Maronites desire to and can live in peace, free without armies of occupation. This is also the firm position of the government of the Republic of Cyprus, a just and viable solution of the Cyprus issue.